Ladies and gentlemen, AMD have delivered a mic drop moment to the GPU market, or at the very least, NVIDIA and their RTX 5060 and 5060 Ti class graphics cards. 299 US dollars for the 8 gigabyte variant and 349 US dollars for the 16 gigabyte variant. Not only that, but AMD's official benchmarks, which we'll get into in just a moment, shows that yes, they are going to be very favorable in performance against NVIDIA's RTX 5060 Ti. And what about the specifications? Well, we are looking at 32 compute units, 32 ray tracing accelerators, and 64 AI accelerators, a 256-bit bus, GDDR6, of course, running at 20 Gbps. Again, there is a dual memory configuration of 8 and 16 gigabytes, with the 16 gigabyte variant costing you just a little bit more in terms of energy. But I think that this is going to be one of those GPUs where, again, and 16 gigabyte model is just way more preferable. I can somewhat understand people going for eight gigabytes if they're doing esports only, but I personally think that eight gigabytes is just not worth it anymore uh, for a card that's going to be in the 5060 Ti class. Maybe if it was a little bit lower performance, I could see an argument of eight, but even then, 16 gigabytes, please. We should also just briefly discuss the boost frequencies, 3.13 gigahertz as a very precise number. On the other hand, these are going to be reference design kind of base model cards, and you can certainly get GPUs which will run faster. I imagine, for example, Sapphire, along with other uh, vendors, will have GPUs that are going to hit 3.2 and 3.3 gigahertz, and that seems to be backed up with numerous leaks. Ultimately, AMD are predicting that these GPUs are going to be roughly 6% faster. You can see some benchmarks on screen than the RTX 5060 Ti. And they're going to be, of course, uh, much like the 5060 Ti, uh, targeting the 1440p sweet spot. I imagine that they would be somewhat capable, at least if you start using FSR4's performance mode and all of the other jazz, to run at 4K, at least somewhat competently. But, of course, their main primary target would be demographics of gamers who are running a 1440p display. And I can certainly imagine that they're going to do a really good job. It's going to be very interesting to see what the sales figures are. Ultimately, I think the market is in desperate need of a lot of competition at 299 to 349 US dollars. I think they are much more palatable. Although, to be fair to AMD, the... The MSRP price of the 9070 XT is also pretty decent, but you know, even that, it's still a lot of money for people to cough up. So I think having a GPU that is pretty competent at 1440p is going to be really important. I hope um, they are able to put these things out at high volume. And second point, I very much am hopeful that uh, they start grabbing a lot of market share because that, of course, puts a lot of pressure on NVIDIA, which is always a good thing. I should also mention that the date that these cards are releasing is apparently the 5th of June, so we only have to wait a few more weeks before they become available at retailers. I will be very, very, very interested to see how the market receives these graphics cards. But wait, there's more. FSR 4 will be receiving an update, and this is known as Redstone. Now, at the conference, there was no mention of FSR 4 being backported to, let's say, RDNA 3 or RDNA 2 class cards. Maybe we'll see more about that in the future, but I'm a little skeptical, because at least for the Redstone update, they're going to be doubling, tripling, and quadrupling down on leveraging machine learning capabilities, of course, that were incorporated in FSR 4. Now, I also think that this is going to be a very pivotal time for AMD, because remember, they have that cooperation now with Sony going forward, and, uh, well, basically, PSSR for the PlayStation is going to continue to evolve, almost a branch of FSR, albeit more consoleized and potentially making use of Sony's you know, console-like architecture. In other words, it's going to be probably specific stuff that Sony are going to ram into the GPU of the PlayStation 6. And also, most most notably, uh, PSSR works quite differently to, for example, uh, FSR in how, how it renders and upsamples things because of just bandwidth and all other stuff. But for FSR 4, there will be several new technologies that AMD will be incorporating 
And uh, I don't think they're going to surprise many of you, especially if you've been keeping up with AMD's own blogs. They are Neural Radiance Cache, Ray Regeneration, and Machine Learning Assisted Frame Generation. So Neural Radiance Cache basically is almost like checking how light bounces around the scene to help predict and improve uh, indirect lighting. So essentially what it can do is use you know, current pixels on the screen, so spatial data, plus also temporal data, i.e. past frames of animation, as well as clever stuff using machine learning to basically improve the visuals in the game or whatever they're rendering. It's worth noting that, of course, NVIDIA has had this technology for some time, but it's not too surprising AMD are going down the same rabbit hole. It'll be very interesting to basically do quality comparisons between the two and also performance comparisons. I suspect AMD's tech is going to be very much impressive. And that also brings us to ray reconstruction, or should I say ray regeneration, which is basically AMD's name for pretty much the same thing. This makes use of a neural uh, network. So basically when you're running uh, path tracing or ray tracing, obviously it shoots a bunch of rays along the, around the screen to figure out, hey, what's happening with this light, what's happening with this shadow, and so on and so forth. But it's very, very costly, even if your hardware supports all of the necessary stuff for BBH and all that other crap, to be able to actually compute this stuff. It is very, very intensive. Therefore, if you don't want your frame rate to slow to a crawl, you need to start to basically make predictions on how to improve the actual visuals and that. Otherwise, you start getting lots of noise. And uh, that's where this comes in, essentially. It should, at least in theory, improve the visual quality of a scene. Now, AMD will also be further enhancing FSR4's upsampling technology by incorporating yet more machine learning, but there will also be uh, improvements to frame generation. Unfortunately, as of the time I'm recording this video, there are not a ton of details on the differences in how this works, quality and so forth. They basically provided some answers, but it's not too surprising they didn't go super in depth into this. I'm sure there'll be interviews or official announcements and updates in the future. Uh, because ultimately this announcement also isn't quite ready for prime time, so it will not be launching in time for the 9060 XT. It's going to be coming later on in the year. I understand that that may be a little bit frustrating, but I think when it comes to software on drivers in particular, it isn't just a case of, oh, it works. It also needs to be incorporated by games developers and also needs to kind of hit all of the check marks that we expect. No one wants, you know, visuals of someone's toe coming out of their nose or something like that obviously i'm being a bit silly with neural radiance cache but still my point stands this is kind of one of those things where it needs to um it needs to impress because obviously people are going to be doing comparisons against nvidia and so on and even outside of nvidia even if amd were operating inside of a bubble no one wants a new technology and their first instinct is uh this is not that good um, obviously, with flame generation, they are, will also need to ensure that latency is as best as possible. So it's going to be incorporating in, uh, new technologies, which are seemingly going to be going hand in hand with it, like anti lag. But again, as of the time I'm recording this, the exact details are not 100% forthcoming. You, yes, you, Bob. I mean, it would be pretty hilarious if Bob was watching this, right? But no, seriously. Do you want 96 cores? Well, I've got good news for you. The next generation of Thread Ripper processors has actually been announced. And of course, they will be leveraging the Zen 5 microprocessor architecture. As a shock and uh, awe tactic, I can probably guess that uh, Zen 6 is also going to receive a Thread Ripper update, not too surprisingly, eventually. But as for this set of processors, we will have uh, 96 cores, 100 and uh, sorry, 96 cores, 192 threads. And, uh, well, these chimps are absolutely just massive in size. Uh, the clock frequency goes up to around 5.4 gigahertz. That is obviously the max boost with just one or two threads loaded. The base frequency, meanwhile, is 2.5. And as for the amount of cache, 384 megabytes, which... I know it makes sense from a mathematical perspective of like, oh, well, you have all of these cores and those cores 
kind of have L3 cache and the L3 cache is not small. So if you multiply, I know it makes sense mathematically, but it is still absolutely ridiculous to me that we are looking at CPUs that have more like three X roughly the L3 cache of my system used to have back in like the, uh, for main system memory on like the 1990s or whatever it was or early 2000s. I think that's just absolutely crazy. I understand computers move fast, but it's still pretty damn cool. Obviously with these thread ripper processes, they are not designed for the average game or perhaps even content creation. Someone's doing like Adobe Premiere work, although they would be pretty great for that. Ultimately, they will be designed for folks who are doing a lot of simulation work or, you know, need tons of virtual machines and a lot of performance. And it's not just, of course, the core count. You can also outfit them with a crap ton of memory because they've got so many memory channels, so lots of bandwidth. And obviously, I.O. will be also extremely important for a system like this. So not only can you just load them up with tons of GPUs, but you would also have the ability to have lots of PCIe lanes for things like, well, you know, SSDs and pull data around and stuff like that. I am, I'm actually curious, guys. Let me know in the comments below, especially if you were a HEDT enjoyer back in the day, um, let's say the early Threadripper processors or Intel uh, older boards um, like Skylight X or even older. What was it brought? Was it? Haswell E, Broadwell E, I can't remember the other ones, my brain is just like broken apparently, but you get the idea. Let me know in the comments below, did you used to need those boards for your work and they'll perhaps have transitioned to the higher end um, Ryzen processors, like for example the 9950X3D or the 9950X or equivalent Intel processor? I know a few people who just are like, well, I used to do video editing or what have you, but now I just don't need all of those extra threads because Adobe Premiere or whatever is absolutely fine with my current system workloads. So let me know in the comments below. With that said, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.